it was like a terrible nightmare. Even now, I sometimes wake from a dream and find myself shaking from the memory of it. I'll never forget when I first saw him. A man so monstrous, so unhuman, that I refused to think it could ever happen again to anyone else. But who can be sure? Others have had the same idea. Oh, yes, the law forbids it. But laws are broken every day. Will it happen again to someone else? Someday? In the future? Perhaps. Perhaps it will happen to many. I don't want to see it. To hear the story of this strange monster, listen in a moment to 2000 Plus. <laughs> in the world of tomorrow. Dramatic stories of science fiction from the years beyond 2000 A.D. Today, an amazing story of science uncontrolled. The Giant Walk. slimy stomachs. Feed the rats, the doctor said. Always feed the rats. As if you weren't big enough already. If I had my way, I'd kill all you rats. That's what I'd do. I wouldn't go close to them, Hawkins. A rat four feet long can be quite a nasty little thing. Oh, yes, 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 Dr. Ellsworth. Is everything ready, Weston? Yes, Dr. Ellsworth. Barstow? Yes, sir. Then open the cage. Look at him, go. I've never seen a rat run a maze so rapidly. Check that gold gradient, Weston. Yes, Doctor. The rat's in the food box now. Let me see. 11.8. There. You see, Weston? Not an unusual intelligence. Just high. Well above that of the average rat. Look at them. The power in those legs. Barstow. <laughs> Just imagine what they could do with their teeth if they had the chance. It's frightening to think what would happen if all rats were giant rats. If they got loose. It's evolution, Barstow. Merely the scientific elimination of group barriers. Now that your experiment's a success, we can tell the world. Your theories will be accepted. You'll regain your rightful place in science. Not yet, Barstow. Not yet. I'm already at work on what I consider will be an ultimate experiment. It's only a matter of calculating, checking, and verifying data on the rats so we can build a larger pituitary revitalizer. Well, what animal do you have in mind for this new experiment, Dr. Ellsworth? What animal? Well, there's only one that I could possibly be interested in now. It's the next logical step. Surely you can't mean... Yes, Bosto. A man. <laughs> See me, Dr. Ellsworth? Yes, Weston. I want to talk to you about the experiment on human beings. I want you to help me with the experiment. But I I hope you're not thinking of me, Dr. Ellsworth. I, I really don't What's think that I... What's the matter, I... Weston? Don't you think it would be valuable to give yourself to science? Well, it would seem that there are so many to choose from. So many, Weston? Who, for example? I'm sure that old Hawkins won't do... And we really can't kidnap them or anyone. But, Dr. Ellsworth, I, I, I was... I'd say it would be a great honor to be the first real Superman on Earth. Well, how about Barstow? Exactly, Weston. Just what I was leading up to. <sighs> <laughs> you seem relieved. Yes. In Barstow, we have a real physical specimen. And he seems to have quite a boundless enthusiasm for the future of mankind. An attitude you apparently don't share. 
Well, how could we get him to agree to it? Psychology, Weston. It's merely a matter of appealing in the proper manner to his scientific judgment and sense of fair play. Now, here is what I want you to do when he gets back. Well, glad to see you back, Barstow. Dr. Ellsworth, Weston tells me you're ready to begin the final experiments on man. Yes, Barstow, I soon hope to be the first of a new race. A race that will make the man of today look like a pygmy, puny and insignificant. If the experiment succeeds... My physical size will double or even triple. I'll be able to live at least 300 years instead of the 100 or so odd years a man can expect today. The brain cells will probably also expand, giving me an intelligence that will make you and Weston look like products of the Stone Age. Well, I don't think it's fair for you to sacrifice yourself. It's not fair to humanity. If you die, there'll be nobody to carry on. You know these experiments are illegal. We could never find another subject. It would have to be one of us three... Or nobody. Well, I'd be willing to take the chance, Dr. Ellsworth. And so would I. You can't go through with this, Dr. Ellsworth. You're needed to direct the experiment. Gentlemen, gentlemen. I see you have the true scientific spirit. Well, since I am unwilling to give up my right to be the subject, and you're unwilling to let me be the subject, then there's only one way out. What's that? We'll draw lots. If you agree, leave the decision up to fate. That sounds like a good idea. Don't you think so, Barstow? Why, sure, I guess so. Well, it's the only way out, my boy. One of us must be the guinea pig. Now, I'll tear three strips of paper. Now, the lots are arranged in my hand. Whoever gets the short one will submit to the experiment, and there'll be no further objection from any of us. Agreed? Agreed. Right. Choose, gentlemen. Weston? Barstow? Myself. Hmm. I've drawn the short one. Yes. I'd like... I'd like some time to see Barbara, Dr. Ellsworth, before the experiment. I'll give you three weeks to straighten out your affairs, Barstow. Then I'll expect you back at the laboratory. <laughs> Contacts are wide open. Cut the circuit, Weston. That's enough. Well, Barstow, are you ready? Quite ready, Dr. Ellsworth. As you know, it may be painful at first, but after the primary series, I don't think you'll notice much. I'm not worried, Dr. Ellsworth. No, of course not. Well, good luck, my boy. Thank you, sir. Contacts open, Weston? Yes, doctor. Then pipe the circuit. Now, that's fine. I'll keep it steady at 3,000. Prepare for the first injection. We'll give him five electronic unit charges. Valve open. Uh, uh. How are you feeling, Barstow? Pain. My old body is numb. You've got to stop the experiment, Dr. Ellsworth. <laughs> He's out again. Dr. Ellsworth, you think we're doing the right thing? His heartbeat has slowed down so much, I'm afraid... Oh, what, Weston? You're not losing your nerve, are you? Oh, no, no, no. It's uh, only that I thought... That... Don't do any thinking, Weston. I'll do that part of it. You just check the regenerator charts. Very well, Dr. Ellsworth. Nothing is going to keep me from completing this experiment. And I warn you not to try to interfere, Weston. I close the circuit. We'll inject again. One hundred cc's. Valve open. Three weeks. I can't believe it, Dr. Osworth. Look at him. Twelve feet tall, and he weighs 750 pounds. Of course, Weston. As I told you, there's very little difference, really, between a rat and a man. We're all animals. But, Doctor, he hasn't given much sign of life during the past few days. You think his body can stand the strain of all this growth? Certainly. In fact, I think we'll give him the final super-injection today. 
About 500 cc should do it. 500? But that's five times what we've been giving him. Yes, Weston. We're building a new skeletal structure. New flesh, cartilage, and bones. Contacts open. Keep it steady at 6,000. We've got to provide the final shock for a system. The valve's completely open, Dr. Ellsworth. All right. Now. Look, Weston. We've done it. He's 30 feet tall of his an inch. Fosto, can you hear me? Can you understand what I'm saying? You must yeah. talk slowly, Fosto. Slowly. You're not an ordinary human being anymore. Look, he's getting up. Hey. hey. What's happening to me? Why is everything so small? Our experiment is a success, Fosto. You're a superman. I've made you a superman. But I can't move. My head is touching the skylight. Stoop down, Barsto. There's a rolling door in the side of the laboratory. I think you can crawl through that. Easy, Barsto. Very slowly. Uh, that's it. Well... How does the world look now that you have some elbow room? Small. The world is very small. Thirty feet of muscle and bone. It's my creation. My creation. <laughs> testing so far. Well, as best I can figure, Doctor, the subject can lift almost 20 times as much weight as an ordinary man and run approximately 60 miles an hour without difficulty. Oddly enough, though, he appears to get along fine on four or five hours sleep a night, but he's consuming food at a rate that's all out of proportion. Well, that's understandable. It's still making an adjustment. Go on. Mentally, very superior. He appears to be able to solve the most complicated problems right in his head. It's all just as I predicted. But this morning, though... After I just finished giving him the work test, he pulled up a tree by the roots and waved it at me. It was frightening. I ran and he began laughing. It sounded more like thunder. Less than you're letting your imagination run away with you. It's quite obvious what's the matter. He's not getting enough exercise. We've got to give him more physical work to do. Come on. There he is. Just sitting on that hill and staring. Bosto! Yes, Dr. Ellsworth? I want you to take this special shovel we've made for you and dig a trench. Weston will mark it out for you and check your working speed. All right, Dr. Ellsworth. Whatever you say. See? It's quite simple. You've just got to keep him occupied. Dr. Ellsworth, I'd like to ask you a question. Yes? What are we going to do with Barstow? I mean, what are we going to tell the world about him? We can't go on continually this way. Yes, of course we can. And once we're sure of ourselves, we'll get other men. We'll make giants of them. We're building a race, Weston. A race of supermen with which we can rule the world. We've only to learn how to control Barstow so he'll respond to our every command... Then we'll build an army. Doctor, that's not right. You know, Weston, you're a good assistant. It's only when you think that you get into trouble. Dr. Ellsworth wants to use me for the next experiment. Oh, 
What's that to me? I don't think you understand. He's working on a method to control you electronically as a giant. It's what he's been waiting for. And when he can finally control you, he'll begin to make more giants. He wants to build an army of giants so he can take over the world. That isn't true. Dr. Ellsworth is interested only in science. You just don't want to be a freak as I am. Cut off from everything. Just because I was unlucky at drawing lots. No, no. Not unlucky, Barstow. Framed. Dr. Ellsworth and I agreed to volunteer just to get you to volunteer. We... We, we arranged the lot so that you would be chosen. Uh, Don't do anything. Uh, oh, please, Barstow. That's why I let you know. I wanted you to do something about it before it's too late. Now, what are you going to do? Where are you going? Dr. Ellsworth. You're raving, Barstow. Go back to your quarters in the barn and we'll talk about it in the morning. I can't go back to the barn. Why not? I'm tired of living in the barn. I knocked it down. Calm down, Barstow. Calm down before you do any more damage. Yes, Dr. Ellsworth. That's just what you'd like, isn't it? For me to calm down. To become nothing but a giant tool in your hands. A tool for conquest and revenge. Isn't that so, Dr. Ellsworth? I don't know what you're talking about. You know, all right. And what's more important, I know, Dr. Ellsworth. I know that you tricked me into volunteering for this experiment. What if I did? You were the best physical specimen. You would stop at nothing to carry out your hideous experiments future of mankind. <laughs> That's a good one. You're not interested in mankind at all. You're only interested in building a super race for your own ends. You want an army of giants so you can take over the world. You're mad, Bosto. You are my subject and you have no right to behave this way. If I had the control of finish... You... You knocked out that wall. Yes, Dr. Ellsworth. And that's just what I ought to do to you. You have no more right to live than I. How much strength does it take for a 30-foot man to kill an ordinary man with his fist, Dr. Ellsworth? Figure that out. What are you going to do? I'm not going to do anything to you. I'm going to let the World Science Council know about your experiments. They'll know what to do about you. But you can't leave. You're a monstrosity. The world won't understand you, Barstow. Besides, you have an obligation. You must sacrifice yourself for science. He's gone? Yes. All my plans ruined. Uh, yes. Weston, you did this to me. You told him about my plans. Hey, yes, Dr. Ellsworth, I, you, I did. Oh, you've ruined the experiment, Weston. You betrayed science. You have no right to live. Who are you to decide these things? Come inside, Weston, now. A gun? Right. Come along now, Weston. There's one last experiment I want to perform. I'm curious to see how a man can stand up against a giant rat. No, no, please. Please, Ellsworth. I'll do anything you want. I don't want to die. I'll be the subject of a new experiment. It's too late, Weston. Shall I thought of those things before? Stand still. There. Right by the cage. No, no. No. Don't push me in. No. I can't go. Try your hands on me. me. No. 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 Sure, glad the old man let me have the jet car tonight. Oh, it's a lovely night to go riding with you, Bob. Say, Helen, 
You hear something? The motor, you mean? No, no, listen. I hear it now, too. I can't imagine it. Oh, well, I guess... Oh, it's Bob over there! It, it looks like a man. It's so big! Oh, Bob! It's a giant standing in the road in front of us here. Turn the car around, quick! Us with his hand. Why are you afraid of me? I just want to talk to you. I won't hurt you. Put us down. Put us down, you monster. I'm not a monster. I am not. Oh, we're back on the road. He didn't hurt us. What are you going to do? I'm going to the police. They've got to know about this giant. <laughs> on Sector 4-7 immediately. Strange creature molesting jet travelers on Highway 9. Reported human in appearance. 30 to 40 feet high. May be dangerous. Repeat, may be dangerous. They've asked rockets, Jim. This is our meat. Just our luck. Probably an invader from Mars. To all rockets, check destroyer guns before moving into danger area. Repeat, check all weapons. Sir, hold on. There's something moving in field seven. Well, I'll be. It's a man. But what a man. Rocket 117 to control tower. Located creature moving rapidly in the direction of McKenna City. We're closing in. Very good, 117. Keep on it. We'll have all available rocket cars join you. Okay, Tim, we're near enough now. Safety off destroyer guns. We'll fire a couple of warning shots to slow them down. Safety off. Fire. Stop it. He's waving his hands. We'll circle him. Keep circling. 117 to Central Control. Come in, 117. Come in. Circling giant. Prepare to move in for a closer look. Guns ready. Orders. Repeat. Orders. That's, uh, he's swinging. Reverse engines. Reverse engines. Central Control calling 117. Central Control calling 117. They don't answer, Commissioner. Confound it. Why can't we get a video screen fix? I'm working on it, sir. Give me that microphone. All police jets and air rockets. All jets and air rockets. Attention. Attention. Rocket 117 has been attacked by the giant. Contact has been lost. Take battle formation blue. Prepare for attack. Prepare for attack. Good luck. We'll blast that creature out of existence. What could it be, sir? A man from another planet? It's possible. We can only get that video fix. Well, I'm getting it, Commissioner. Look, there he is. Good heavens, what an enormous creature. Yes, I see it. Calling all rockets. Take elevation 3,000 and prepare to dive on target. I've got to see the police commissioner. You can't. It's a battle emergency. Who let you in the control room? It's about the giant. We've got to stop your attack. Are you crazy? That creature's a menace. He's knocked down one of our rockets, and now we're going to get him. But you don't understand, sir. Squadrons at all elevation 3,000. Targets in view. Look, commissioner, on the video screen. We're ready to open up on them, sir. Just give the order. No, 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 no. You've got to call off the attack. Commissioner, look to the right of the giant near that small hill. Those two men are from Rocket 117. They're walking unmolested toward Junction 9. Thank God they're all right. There, you see? He's not dangerous. Stop the attack. That creature's been running berserk. Transmit the command for all ships to hold their positions until I give the order. Unless the giant attacks them. Yes, sir. Orders to all... Now, look here, sir. What do you know about that creature? Is he from another planet? It's an Earth man. How do you know? He escaped from a government antibiotics laboratory. He was a subject of an illegal experiment. I'm Dr. Weston. I, I, I work in that laboratory. Well, Earth man or not, he's a madman. We've got to do something about him. You don't have to do a thing. It'll all be over in a few minutes. Something's happened. I don't see the giant anymore. What do you mean, all over, Dr. Weston? Look at the video screen. There. That's what I mean. Good heavens. It's amazing. Squadron Leader 20 to Control Tower. Something's happened here, sir. I don't see the giant. He's disappeared. What are our orders? All police jets and rockets. Attack canceled. Repeat. Attack canceled. So you see, Barbara, I had to thank Weston after all. He's a disagreeable character. But if he hadn't acted so promptly, as soon as he found out, those rockets would have finished me. Ellsworth tried to kill Weston, didn't he, after you broke away? Yes, with the rats. 
Weston managed to get outside the cage, and they killed Dr. Ellsworth instead. And shortly after that, the rats fell into a coma, and Weston examined one by X-ray, and he discovered that the new bone structure was in the process of dissolving into cartilage, and that cartilage into flesh, which would soon melt away. And he realized their size had only been maintained by the injections, and it'd soon be back to their original skeletal structure. That's why he went to the police. Yes, but how did he know you'd shrink, too? Because they stopped giving me the injections. Oh, Oh, seeing you here like this, I can't believe all those stories in the paper about you. A horrible picture. I can hardly believe it myself, Barbara. It's like a bad dream. Oh, yes. Here's what I came back for. Dr. Ellsworth's safe. Oh, what's in it? Here they are. And here they go. You're burning them. Years of scientific research up in flames. Huh. But I don't want another man ever to go through what I did. Be cut off from humanity. To be just a specimen in some scientist zoo. I found out one thing, Barbara. Thickness isn't a matter of size. A man can be 30 feet tall or he can be 6 feet tall. It's what he has in his heart that counts. This world doesn't need bigger, more powerful physical specimens. It needs men with bigness of soul who can love, respect their fellow men. Next week, another exciting story on 2000 Plus. The strange adventure of a man who found nothing and was terrified. Be sure to listen next week to Alone. 2000 Plus is produced by Dreyer and Winolson Productions Incorporated. In today's cast, Joseph Julian was Barstow, Henry Norell was Ellsworth, Lon Clark was Weston, Rhino Rayburn was Barbara, Morton Lawrence was the police commissioner, and Bruce Evans was Hawkins. The script was written by Julian Snyder. was composed by Elliot Jacoby, the orchestra conducted by Emerson Buckley, sound Walt Shaver and Adrian Penner, engineer Bob Albrecht, this is Ken Marvin speaking. came from New York.